Mesela kendi şimdi ne oluyor? O zaman hakkımla alakalı bir şey söyleyeceğim. Sence giremiyoruz. Doğru. Good morning, everyone. Welcome all. Today we are hosting Alex. I'll uh, call him like that because it's really hard to pronounce the Brazilian version. Uh, Pascal from Brazil uh, to give a talk on uh, non-coding RNAs, and that's going to be a bioinformatics perspective finally. Um, so uh, I'll briefly introduce him. Uh, he told me that he has introductory slides on himself. So better I'll leave the stage to him afterwards. So Dr. Pasco is an associate professor in the computer science department at the Federal University of Technology, Paraná, Brazil. Um, he is a member of the Bioinformatics and Pattern Recognition Lab, and we'll hear more about his research and his place uh, from him. The floor is yours. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. So, first of all, thank you very much to introduce me and to give me the opportunity to be here. Uh, my talk will be what I have done since the last year, myself and my students, in bioinformatics specifically of no code RNAs. Uh, I got from Google Translation. I think <laughs> I have done the right way. Sorry if I have any mistake. Google help me. <laughs> Uh, I want to also thank you for Professor uh, Gokhan, I don't know if I pronounced it correctly, for the opportunity to be here, so thank you very much. Why I am here in, in Turkey? Because I was awarded to come to Academy's University by the Mevlana program to give some classes during two weeks in Antalya. So I'm in Antalya, I arrived this week, and will be until the next week to give some classes, seminar. And I got this opportunity to be here uh, with you, give you a talk, so thank you to be here. Uh, my background, I'm undergraduate in mathematics with informatics, then I have done my master and PhD in bioinformatics. After that, I got a position in the computer science department in the Federal University of Technology of Brazil, in the south of Brazil, I'll show you later. My main interest is research in bioinformatics, of course, I also uh, RNA computational biology, modeling biological data, and pattern recognition. This is more my directions as research. And teaching parts, I have uh, I teach in some computational courses. Now in this semester, I give in class more in a technological course and some soft engineering. And also I'm professor in the master course of informatics. And you have a young course that started just three years ago in bioinformatics. No PhD yet, but maybe in the future. And if you want to more information, not only about myself, but the other professor in our lab, you have, as she said, a, a bioinformatics pattern recognition group. So would be very happy if you go there and see. There is an English version. And you can see the other professor. There is other people in the group doing other things, not only about no-code RNA. Go there, please. So the next few slides, ten slides, will be around about my institution and about uh, uh, in Brazil. Then I start to, to give my talk. So the idea of my institution: we are young as university because we are more a technological university. We are young as university, but not as institution. They start as professional, like typing school, and. After some years, we will start with some small, uh, short technical course in Brazil. And 2005, we will change for university, technological university. So uh, in Brazil, Brazil is so big, so huge. So here is the three states in the south. I'm this one in Paraná. I think most of them know Carnaval, Rio de Janeiro, it's here. But I'm the first state in the south. There are some numbers about, uh, I have a video that I want to show you, it's better than to show in a slide. 
that briefly give an idea about uh, the state, the place that. Uh, just to give an idea about uh, the region that uh, I am, the university. So uh, my university is, there are 15, uh, sorry, uh, 13 campus. I belong to one of them, Cornel Procopio. Uh, we are, just to give an idea, in the north of the state. So Rio de Janeiro is like this, Sao Paulo is here, we are here. So it's not similar to the, this weather. Our campus, as I, I told you, there is some not on computer background course in undergraduation, but electrical and mechanical. And there is uh, a master, as I said, informatics and bioinformatics, mathematics, mechanical, and master and PhD in electrical. So this is the general idea. Uh, in general, uh, these are the numbers of students of all the campus, not all uh, that I work. And uh, these are the number of staff, uh, including Professor Pre, almost uh, 4,000 of uh, people in all the university in terms of uh, professors and the staff that help us. So this is the brief uh, introduction about the uh, university, just to give an idea. And now let's go to the good part. So I give you some concepts about no-code RNA just to help me to give some idea of what I, I have done. So in the beginning, let's say people in the last, the end of the last center, people want to have a big question that is, what is transcriptome? What is really you have as transcript? The definition of DIN. So people in 1997 have the idea that uh, 100,000 genes for humans, and that is on the project that phantom for a mouse. And people that have the question that the complexity of the organism are in the protein. However, this project, after some years, and if you look the number of coding genes, you see that the human compared with the other organisms, some some case has less than the other organisms. And so the question is, you are a zebrafish, for example, a fish is much more complex in terms of protein than us. So this is a, a difficult question. So what is make the difference in terms of the eukaryote, in terms of the genes? So one explanation, one possible explanation was that alternative splice, but if you look for the number, it's still the number of protein 
is like three five percent of our genome. Most of the rest of the genome people think that are junk DNA. So this is not true. So although this increase the number of uh, amount of gene, this do not give us the difference, for example, between the human and the fish and worm and so on. So this project like encode for human and phantom for uh, mouse highlight not only this part but most of them highlight that some <laughs> there is some RNAs that they are they have the uh, transcription but not the translation and they have functionality. People call this no code RNA. So they stop here, they have function. So uh, this is so new, like 30 years ago, more or less. And they are divided by size, the long, long no code are large and they small. After that, people start to found a lot of kingdom, in the several species, different type of local, no code RNA. Uh, this is a very, very uh, good uh, graphic because in the bottom you have uh, from bacteria into human genomes, not possible to see, but just to give an idea, from bacteria to human genome, the last one, you have the, f the ratio of uh, coded genes, and in the top, the ratio of no coded genes. So this gives us a light in terms of the complexity. Maybe no code RNA could us give now an answer about the complexity. Not all the answer, but a light on that. So it is, this is just to give you some brief conception. And what I have done in no code RNA, one thing that you recently have done is a tool and an approach that you call RNA plonk. If this was specific for plants, this was result and published result for my master student that finished it uh, the end of the last year in collaboration with a, bio a biological person, my colleague Don, Professor Douglas. And the idea that we have long no-code RNA, as I show you, you can divide the no-code RNA by the size um, until 2,200, sorry, no-code title, they are small. After that, they consider long no-code RNA. Uh, they are classified by the location, so you have in the opposite strain, you have uh, intergenic, you, and so on. The main motivation is you have uh, a lot of uh, evidence, biological evidence, how important are uh, local RNA in terms of biological process, post-transcription -trans regulation, chromatic <laughs> modification, and so on. But most of the approach until uh, two years ago are focused on animal and human and so on. So there is, at that time, um, I should start the master, there is no uh, to apply from plants. So you have done a, a model, so you apply machine learning techniques, you get some, uh, you supervise uh, methods, so you need to, you know the label, so you got some long no code RNA, you got some machine RNA, you train a, a, a model, but the main idea that you have two, two questions. If it's possible to identify low non-code RNA plants, of course, you, you expect to do that. But the main question is, which are the features that could give you the information to identify low non-code RNA? So you use more than 5,000 features, put them on machine learning, use some different classifier as support vector machine and so on, uh, three machines, and then you test with your other plants uh, to build the model. At the end, I show you, we found uh, uh, 16 features that uh, could help us to, with accuracy, identify long no RNA. So the, the feature that you will start, I like Khmer, uh, from one to six nucleotide. Uh, the sequence length, GC content, and other ORF information, like uh, in, in start and end of ORF and so on. So this is what the initial one, the number of the feature that you use. And uh, you've got six, uh, 
sort of five different plants, Arabidops, uh, uh, soya bean, uh, Oriza sativa. So because you, the idea is you can generalize the model and have to cover all amount of plants. This is the main idea. Of course, it's prediction, so you have done some mistake, of course, all the tools have a error uh, ratio. We want to minimize this ratio. And you, at the end, you got these 16 features. So you start with more than 5,000, and you have a good result with all 16 features. So this is very nice. Um, for example, GC content, uh, six life, and so on. Of course, you compare with literature. Other, uh, at that time, you are finishing the, the manuscript to submit it. There is a group, I think, for version. They publish a tool for plants. Of course, then you compare. And if you look at the plot, you are compare how we are good enough to find what's long and how we are good enough to find what is not uh, uh, long long code. This comparison you plot here, and you have done eight comparison against other eight plants, and you are like here. The idea is how close you are get here is better. Less false positive and good result. This is the meaning of this graph. So how close you get here is better your tool. You are here. The other are like here. Some are good to say that what's not, but they are not good to find what is. Okay. Uh, just an example, you got an independent publication in these plants, and you compare two da different data sets from ESET, and you are pretty close. One, you got the better result, and the other, you are in the top two, top three. I summarize some results because there is a lot of results to show. The other, in cotton and populus, is a, a three. We are in the best most of them. So just to give a number, in all comparison you have done, in 82% you are the best tools. So until now, as far as we know, you are the best approach for plants to identify long no code Maybe continue with that. So if you want more information, the tool is free. And if you have any questions, if you want to use it, you have any comments, please let me know, it will be a pleasure. Uh, the main idea, the main contribution for this uh, work that uh, you get these features, you don't know anything about it, and you got the best one. So what do you want now? First of all, there is a lot of questions. One of them is you want to decrease the number of false positive results, one thing that you need to improve. <coughs> the other thing, you, you generalize the model. So, and if you look for a specific class, you have the same result or not? You have the same feature or not? You don't know. And the, the another question, how is the contribution of these features? Why you found these features? You do not have time to answer, so you have this kind of question. You know? So you, you went to back to the biology and see if biology could explain this feature that you found. And another question is, you know, for example, that microRNA is clear two words, the animal and the plants. But for longer than that, you don't know. So you are in a, in a project with a German in the University, University of Leipzig to answer this question. So this is the next uh, question you want to answer. So this work this was my master student and some professor, my colleague. So this is one, one case. So I have time to show one more. Uh, This is another work from a master's student. He's also work on that. Uh, this will be related between element and anocodarnia. Sorry about the figure that's in Portuguese. <laughs> I forgot to translate, sorry. Uh, elements are very interesting elements because they have mechanisms to copy and paste and move in the genome. So they, they cause a lot of variability. So what's the motivation of our work? So you know in literature that there is case, start with microRNA. Most of microRNA are, for example, human and so on, are intron 
regions. However, there is some evidence, biological evidence, that uh, transposal element could help us for this variability and move and so on. So in 2016, 15-16, we published a result that you investigate the relationship, the overlap between transpose element, the relation between transpose element and microRNA. For example, there is some overlap between these elements and how could influence or not our colleague or our partner has this question how this influence the biology, for example, plants. After that, you have some questions of this work. Okay, you look for microRNA. This is true for the type of no code RNA. The problem is that the data available for plants is not so easy. So the truth is a mess. <laughs> Wait, not only the amount of the data, but the organization of the data and the quality of this data. So you work hard to get this data from. Uh, assemble, so get all the public data. They assemble plants is new, and they have a standard PARP line to do the annotation of no code RNA and uh, uh, transpose elements. So we try to expand, uh, do a new version of uh, this first initial work that you have result from ten plants, and they overlap with 152 elements between microRNA and transpose elements. So our question if it is true for other no code RNA. And after that, yes, we found uh, most of is not surprised, but most of the overlap has the LTR element that's more abundance in plants. So we found uh, this distribution, uh, not uh, uh, say uh, each one, but we found also microRNA, of course, and the other. But some of them uh, unsense are long, but you see lately of information on RNA you want to export now. The general pipeline, just to give you a brief idea, so you got the information for bo both sides, no code RNA and transpose element for assemble. You treat, you do some accuracy, manual operation, and so on, and you put a uh, website that people could uh, check for it, eat. Uh, species, you have an internal graph here, the, for example here in yellow is LTR and here is the di distribution of the other local RNA. So you can see in a graphical way, you can see all the information, GFF, FASTA file, so you have all the information that you found you have available if you want uh, in a graphical way, if you want uh, you know, standard format uh, by format file, if you want to find the specific elements, or if you want to J-browse all the information. So it's public and it's available. And you have a recent publication on that from this year. It's a part of my master's student work. Uh, so, um, last example, I think uh, I have time. The last... Uh, thing that I have done, this was part of my postdoc in German. I have been 2016 to 2017, one year in German in the University of Leipzig with Professor Peter Stadler. And our motivation for my postdoc, the question was, if, the general question, if the biological interaction are run or not. Of course, it's so general. So go more deep. My question was if microRNA and transcript interaction is not random. Go more deep. There is a mechanism, a new mechanism called target immunity. I will give you the definition soon. Or competing endogenous RNA. More people uh, know more in, uh, humor or animal. That is new and you want to answer this question. Are you not to show, so it's specific for microRNA. So just to give you information about microRNA, microRNA is small local RNA. They are interested because they bind to the message RNA, the major sequence, and they avoid to, in general, answer, not more biological specifics or about biological context, but 
to give in one phrase the definition, it bind to the message RNA and avoid to do the translation, so to produce protein. That's the main idea, the main message. So the traditional is not new. People know in the literature this mechanism. So microRNA is in plants, the general size is 21 nucleotides. And uh, in animal is around uh, 18 to 25 nucleotides. And plants in general is perfect, the binding site, so the interaction. So microRNA, if you bind, they prevent a, a, a void to do the translation. However, that is, this mechanism was first discovered in plants, not in animal. Although people say that it's animal, it's not true. In plants in 2007, this guy here, Franco Zohila, is have done a, a very beautiful work, experimental work, and prove that there is a one interaction by other transcript that they call type the mimicry that sequester uh, the microRNA and avoid him to uh, be free, the message RNA to be translated. And this was called microRNA sponge or competing endogenous RNA or target mimicry plants. So this is the partner. If I look more in computational way, uh, is this is the partner, so you have perfect match in the middle like a, a bugle, bugle, and you have some mismatch, uh, GU interaction, something like that. What people have done in the literature? Oh, if I got this partner that's proven by a logical way, just one case, I can use in bioinformatics computation and try to see if it's true for other organisms and so on. So there is a lot of uh, uh, more than 12 uh, papers that try to look in several plants this in a silico way. And uh, what I have done in this publication that will result from my postdoc, uh, two contributions. The first one was a survey because you don't know about the, this topic and so I need to understand. So I can send you if you want. Uh, uh, so I, I show in a history way what happened every year what the main contribution, the methods, the databases, what people have found or not, in which organisms, I don't want to bore you. But this is interesting because people are trying to change a little bit this pattern, the signal, and try to see if it's true or not among the, some organisms. So I summarize until that year, and I propose a general methodology if you want to do the annotation of this mechanism. So I explain from the beginning to the end how you can try to do this annotation, the prediction, and so on. The second contribution was one our question. I need a question. If these interactions are random or not, of course I expect in biology meaning, or that is not random, in my opinion. So I look if there is a motif or not, a signal, let's say. We have done five steps to answer these questions. Uh, the first one, you get the sequence. This is the most of the problem because uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, people publish the data, but sometimes not give in an easy way the, the information. <laughs> and this is the one message I give to you. If you publish the data, please give in a good way, in an easy way the information. Help everybody. So we got the sequence. You do a, a multiple alignment and you manipulation this alignment. Because uh, then after that you try to build in a logo uh, uh, by using man, a motif with, by using this major sequence. With this motif, we found six motif. We try to see the location, if this interaction appear or not by using the other software people see the interaction. So if I found the interaction, so I confirm. And if I found the other organism or not, so if not render or not. So this is the, I found, I said that I found six motifs, but three of them do not work well, and three of, three of them work very well. So I show when it does not work and when it's work. The good point that <coughs> this motif and this one later was uh, confirmed by experimental result. To confirm this idea, to see how it's working in other plants, we got, uh, sorry about the graph, but the idea that you have a lot of plants here, different taxa, 
and you try to see if this motif that you use some microRNA families we found or not so if you have a black here box a uh, square square we found in that uh, uh, plants if not what the meaning that for example here could see that this microRNA is not found in that plants could be also this so you show when it's work when it's not the good answer is that the first motif was confirmed by this work here so after you, you have done this you are writing the publication you back to the literature and you found the independent work that confirmed this motif in an experimental way and after we publish three months later a second uh, research confirmed another, the, the third motif the second one sorry the second one so it's good because uh, two independent work confirm our hypothesis. So you show when it's work, when it's not work. So uh, Peter Stada was my uh, supervisor and postdoc. Irma uh, was uh, his PhD student, helping me, the biology, bioinformatics. And Douglas is my partner in Brazil from uh, also in biology. So for that, uh, I'm finish it sometimes I speak a little faster so if you have any question then there is my email I be very happy. thank you very much for your, your attention thanks again for visiting us and for this nice presentation um, do you have any questions I'll start with the back. Hello, thank you for your Hello. presentation. I have two questions. Okay. The first question is about the uh, first case you showed. So you describe uh, 16 features yeah. specifically to plants. Yeah. So it means you can discriminate what non-coding non -coding RNAs belong to plants compared with other organisms? Is this correct? And the last part, they compare only plants. Only plants. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And from well, that, ju ju just more information. There is other uh, publication looking for animals okay. and show some features. So you want to understand more also about this. All right. But I was wondering if you can use this in between. With these 16 features, mm -hmm. can you discriminate plant species as a signature? Or they just group generally as a plant? We can't discriminate along the corner, just this, ah. in plants. Okay. And a uh, second question is about the target mimic. Okay. So you are proposing that for uh, silencing, you, will, you have a specific areas that target the small RNA. My question is, is this possible? Um, manipulate the mimic area and then avoid the silencing of that gene or some specific gene? You mean there is more experimental side? Yeah, I wonder if uh, it's possible. Yeah, there is uh, some paper that call, but I don't have the, the audience. Maybe I can check, I can send it later. All right. But Thank yes, there is, there is some platform or in terms of experimental way, by engineer something like that, but I, I do not have your answer, sorry. All right, thank you very much. Right. Hello, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have, I think, four questions. Okay. So the first one is, uh, all of your studies uh, so far you have mentioned been on plants. And you have uh, mentioned those uh, 16 factors that are used to identify uh, plants, uh, long down coding art and stuff. Uh, specifically now I'm wondering, which of these plant uh, features are not found, uh, are not uh, applicable to animal studies, which are plant-specific. I mean, some of them are long non-coding RNAs of all species, all evolutionary branches. Which one of those are not found in animals or bacteria or archaea? Uh, I hope in the future, soon, I can answer to you. This is one question we want to know. Um, and uh, the second question is this time it's specifically uh, for plants. Uh, most of the plants studied uh, when we 
sequence of plants chromosome, we know that most plants are not diploids. They tend to be polyploid in some chromosomes and haploid in other chromosomes. So specifically, and some of these chromosomes have uh, wildly uh, divergent evolutionary origins. And most of the time, uh, when competing endogenous RNA evolutionarily arise, they tend to arise along with uh, the genes that they prevent the repression of by microRNAs. Uh, are there any problems caused by the uh, polyploidy of plant genomes uh, that make studying cRNAs more difficult compared to uh, diploid species uh, such as animals? Very good question. Not biological, I don't know. Thank you. But the first one, just to get back, I, I'm interested in that. We saw some features in human, in animal, because most of the approach are in for human. Okay? We saw some features are common, for example, GC content, sequence length. However, how the contribution of these features for the prediction? both organs, for example, plants uh, and so on, and animal, this is a question that you are interested in. Okay? okay? I'll ask my other questions after okay. everyone else. Okay. Well, thank you, but I had a very similar question to the last first question. So. I mean, I was just curious if there's any evidence of the same microRNA sponge idea in uh, other organisms. But, um, Sorry, you mean? Well, I was just wondering, is there any evidence okay. of this micro sponge uh, idea in other organisms ah, okay. than plants? But okay. he asked very similar okay. questions. So. Okay, you have also, there is a database, microRNA sponge, that, that is evidence for animal or mammals. So that is on the things you have this information. Okay. Well thanks. Any other question? If not, thanks again. Thank you very much.